So I guess we'll get started. So we're going to tie Dark Hendricks and Nymph. This nymph I made, this probably I've used this since 1978, and I still use it to this day. Is that the same one? Yeah, well, no, no, no. Yeah, that would be good, wouldn't it? Yeah, 1978, and I've got a fire hole hooked yeah, on it, right? Yeah. So, and I use two different style hooks. I'm beginning to really like these fire hole hooks. And this is a, a fire hole 718, it's a size 12. I use 14, <coughs> size 14 too, but for doing this demonstration, I'm going to do size 12 just to make it easier to see. And the other hook that I use is a Daiichi 1260. They're more, they're like cur the curved stonefly hook. Yeah. They're they're probably the best hooks to use. So we're going to use um a brown a dark brown thread, and we're going to use O2O lead, and we'll do about 10 wraps. And we want it about two-thirds maybe up. You want to have a little room up front so you can tie your legs or you don't want a big bulge. So we'll secure that. Make sure you clean it up. You don't want to, your materials can slip in there and mess your fly up. So you want to coat this with thread. And come back. We'll trim this off. And we're going to use wood duck. What the, thread are you using? That's a UTC-70, ADOT. I just happen to like the UTC because I can split thread stuff. A lot of people don't like it because I think the reason a lot of people like it is they're heavy-handed and it breaks really easy. you got to be careful with it. It's real, it's flat. It makes nice head, nice head. So you want to take about know, eight or nine fibers. And you don't, like on a dry fly hook, you don't want it a hook shank. You want it a little bit shorter than a hook shank. After a while, you get the hang of it. And when you tie, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but when you tie these in, put that fiber in front of you on, on the side on your hook. And what you do is you pull your thread and it'll roll right over. Okay, now see, now that's a little bit too long. So we can just pull that in. That's about right. Leave this on because we got to get that gap between your lead and bang, you want a good tapered body. And I'm always of the opinion you get a good good um, tapered body just because you've got a good tapered base. It's going to make it easier for you to dub. You won't have high spots. It's going to be nice and even. So just build it up a little bit with some thread. Okay, now we're going to use some brown copper wire, UTC, and it's a size brassy. And always use an old pair of scissors to cut your wire. You don't want to dull your good ones up. And that'll help fill that gap up. So just keep going back and forth until you get that little void filled up. All right. And what I can do is we can pass one of these around. I'll pass this around when I get finished. Okay, now... You can use any kind of dark brown. I like to blend my own stuff. I like to put like little specks of orange in it or a little bit of tan and to mix in with it. But dark brown, if it's not dark enough for you, you can take black and a little pinch of black to make that brown get a little bit darker. Now don't go overboard with it. It's just little pinches at a time and it'll set that, it'll make it real dark. And I use um, <clears throat> hairline chocolate dubbing, which is, it's, it's chocolatey looking. I mean, it's not dark, but then I add black to it, and it makes it a nice, rich dark. And that's what the Hendrix and Nymph is. It's a really nice, dark color. So we'll go up just a little bit over the, over the weight we just wrapped, about right there. And we'll take, and you don't have to counter wrap this, it's just dubbing. I always just counter wrap when I use pheasant tails and stuff like that. That secures that fly. But when you're using dubby, you don't really have to do that. So you just wrap it up through. Tie it 
it off. Get your ratty scissors. Okay, and what I use for a wing case, usually what I do here, <clears throat> it just helps, is to put a little bit of dubbing on her, like half dub your thorax. What that does, it makes that easier to set that wing case on there. Um, mall I use mallard, and mallard you can e even goose. It's fibery, and if you tie it right on that hook where that thread is, that stuff is going to come apart. It's going to just split, and you don't want that. So what we're going to do is take a piece. Uh, let's see here. About like that, about that wide. Okay, and on Mallard, you've got a shiny, light gray. You want that facing up when you tie it in, because when you fold it over, it's going to be darker. So we'll tie that in, a loose wrap, and pull up. It's a simple fly to tie, but it's effective as heck. So we'll do a little dubbing here for a thorax. When you do your, th see, I did that wrong. When you do your thorax, make some loose wraps. You want, you're going to want fibers to stick out. What I mean by that, you want to gently dub it. So you go around. What I usually do, I'll come through, and what I do, I pull this over to make sure. Okay, well that's good. See what I mean by split? It just split. So I can marry that together. Okay, let's finish our thorax. A little more. About like that. Okay, now, when I do my wings, a lot of people will take this, make a V. I don't like to do that. I find I, ha I can get more control over my fibers by taking about eight or nine, maybe ten, laying it on the side and pinch it into your thorax. Tie your, fi your secure your fibers, you pull it and then you can adjust it to come down and then you can pull it in to get your length that you need. I find that's the easiest way to do it for me personally. So you do the same thing on the other side. Pinch it into your thorax, a little loose wrap. Pull it into length. Secure that. Trim it up. Take your wing case. Fold it over. Now, I forgot, I have UV cement that I use sometimes for this. But I was doing it the old school way, and there was no UV cement around back in the 70s. We trim it off. Secure it. Whip finish it. And I have my little 22 brush. Good for just picking out a few of the fibers. And that's the Dark Hendrickson nymph.